Isograph's Famica module in Reliability Workbench is a powerful and customizable software application for performing failure modes and effects analysis according to a wide range of different methodologies. My name is Joe Beland, and I'd like to take a few minutes to introduce you to the Famica module of Reliability Workbench. The Reliability Workbench is a suite of integrated software products, so to begin with, we need to make sure we have the Famica module selected. Once we have the Famica module selected, we'll want to choose the specific Famica standard that we want to use to perform our failure mode and effects analysis. The Famica standard can be chosen from the Project Options dialog, which I can get to from the Project Options button on the toolbar, and then by selecting the General tab. Reliability Workbench supports a wide range of Famica formats, such as MIL Standard 1629 Criticality Analysis, Process and Design FMEAs, as well as Failure Modes, Effects, and Diagnostic Analysis, such as IEC 61508 or ISO 26262. For this example, we'll start with a MIL Standard 1629 Criticality Analysis. Once I've selected my standard, I can begin building my FMEA or Famica hierarchy. To do that, I can use the Add Block Toolbar button to begin constructing the hierarchy in the project tree on the left-hand side. When I select the Add Block, Reliability Workbench will ask me to describe the block, provide its function, and provide a failure rate. For this particular example, we'll examine a battery overcharge protection system. For the top level system block, I do not need to enter a failure rate. Failure rates are only entered for component level blocks or functions. We'll keep this example simple, so our next block down will be a diode that's key to the battery overcharge protection. To create the diode, I'll select that battery overcharge protection system that I just added and click the add block button to add a new child block underneath it. The failure rate can be either entered directly or can be data linked from another module such as the reliability prediction module. If I've performed a reliability prediction to calculate failure rates of electronic devices, then I can directly link to its failure rate from the data link definition dialog. Other sources of failure data might be the NPRD or IAEA library, which are both accessible via the parts library right window toolbar selection if a license for them is purchased. For this example, I'll just use a failure rate that I have from an available data sheet. If we wish to perform a functional FMEA, we probably wouldn't go down to the hardware level, but at any point, we can define component functions by adding a function block. Function blocks are very similar to hardware blocks, but they have a little bit less information. For instance, there's no asking for a part number or reference designator. Once I've reached the bottom level of my FMEA, whatever I've chosen that to be, either the functions of the system or the component, the hardware components, I would begin adding failure modes. For this diode, I'll define two failure modes. To create failure modes, I first select the block to which I want to add failure modes, and then I can click the Add Failure Mode toolbar button. The first failure mode of the diode will be a short. I'll also want to define the apportionment the apportionment is the percentage of faults of the diode that are due to this specific failure mode. I will also want to define the effects of the failure mode. Effects will generally apply to the next higher level in the project hierarchy. Let me define an effect of the short failure mode. This effect that I've defined will now become a failure mode at the next higher level. 
if I select the battery overcharge protection level, you'll now see it has a new failure mode, current directed to ground, which has a contributor of the short failure mode from the lower level. I can continue this process editing the failure mode of the battery overcharge protection to define the effect on the overall battery system. In this case, the system effect is no effect. Once more, we can trace this new failure mode effect up to the top level system to see the end effect caused by the diode short failure mode. Let's create one more failure mode for the diode. I'm going to select the diode block and again click the add failure mode toolbar button. The new failure mode will be the open failure mode, which has an apportionment of 70%. I'll once more define an effect on the battery overcharge protection. I can either choose from an existing effect that I've already defined, or again create a new one. In this case, the new effect will be battery continues to charge after maximum safe charge reached. In addition to defining effects and causes, we also have customizable text fields. FMEAs are very often used to record lots of information pertaining to the failure modes, when they occur, how we know about them, and what we can do about them. Depending on the FAMICA format or standard that we're using, these text fields may change or be renamed. They're also user customizable. So right now we see operational mode, detection method, compensating provisions, and remarks basic maintenance actions, and damage mode and damage effects. These are all relevant to the mill standard 1629. If I choose another standard, these will be renamed, or I can create my own custom standard with and customized text fields. Reliability Workbench supports up to 60 customizable text fields for the failure modes. Next to various text fields, you might notice the icon with a P on it, this indicates a reference to the phrase library. Famicas very often reuse common pieces of text. Things such as the detection method or operational mode very often will use the same description across many different failure modes. We can save commonly used pieces of text to the phrase library and access the phrase library by clicking the P button to find perhaps an existing piece of text that might fit into this field. We'll see these next to the text fields, and also next to failure mode descriptions and causes, or block descriptions and functions as well. Phrase libraries are project-specific and user-specified, and you can see the phrase library by clicking the P icon on the toolbar. Phrases are defined as being able to fit into specific fields, so for instance, this one fits specifically into the block description, whereas this phrase can generally fit in any field in the project. Let's continue adding the failure mode hierarchy up to the top level system. The effect of the open failure mode was battery continues to charge after maximum safe charge reached. The effect of that failure mode on the system will be battery overheats. For the end system effects, if we're using MIL-1629, we will want to define a severity. If I edit an end system effect, I will have a drop-down where I can choose a severity. Severities are predefined by the user and stored in the severities table. I can choose one of the existing severities that I've already created, or create a new one from here. MIL standard 1629 defines four severity levels, one through four. I will choose severity level 4 that is minor for the end effect of no effect. For the battery overheats failure mode, I will choose severity level 2 for critical. These severities can be seen by selecting the severities table icon from the toolbar. Let's add one more component block 
to our simple Famica example. We've already seen how to add a block and then to add its failure mode separately, but there's also a shortcut we can use, particularly when we have the same kind of component block or function that appears in multiple places within our hierarchy. We can predefine component types and their failure modes using the apportionments table. The apportionments table is project specific and user defined and includes a list of commonly used components with their failure modes. So for instance, if I edit this apportionment, I can see the kind of block that I've defined and the common failure modes for this block along with their apportionment percentages. In our battery protection system, the other component we'll model will be a cutoff switch. To add an apportioned block, I can use the Add Apportion Block Toolbar button and look for the component type that I wish to define. If I use the filter, it makes it even faster to find it. When I add the apportioned block, you'll note that the failure modes are predefined along with their apportionments. I only need to define the next level effects of each failure mode. For example, the closed failure mode will contribute to the battery continues to charge after maximum safe charge reached. And the open failure mode will contribute to a new failure mode. Battery cutoff from charging circuit. At the next level, I now have a new failure mode, which I need to link to an end effect. The effect of battery cut off from charging circuit is no effect. Once I have completed my Famica hierarchy, defined the failure modes and their apportionments, and the end effects on the system, I can run the analysis to determine the criticality and risk contribution from each failure mode. I can perform the analysis by clicking the green traffic light icon on the toolbar. In the failure modes grid view at the bottom, you can see the criticality of each failure mode, which is calculated from the block rate, the failure mode apportionment, and the failure mode beta factor, that is the percent chance that the failure mode produces the effect. And then the risk contribution is calculated by multiplying the criticality by the weight of the severity of the end effect to which the failure mode contributes. There are other methods for determining failure mode risk. What we've been looking at so far, of course, is the mill standard 1629 method. But another common approach would be a design or process FMEA. Let me go ahead and change my FMEA standard on the General tab. When I change the standard, the text fields will be changed to match what you would expect in a Famica worksheet for that standard. The program will warn me and prompt me that it's going to change the text field headers. When I change the standard, I will also have new selections for the failure modes. In a processor design FMEA, instead of failure mode apportionments, we now have failure mode rankings values for three categories, severity, occurrence, and detection ranking. Each one of these categories is then ranked on a 1 to 10 scale. So for instance, the severity of this particular failure mode might be very low. Of the open failure mode, the severity might be much higher. We can also select a value for the occurrence and detectability ranking. These ranking values are then used to calculate the RPN or risk priority number of each failure mode. If I change my grid view to display a general FMEA layout, then instead of seeing the apportionment values, I will instead see the severity rankings, occurrence ranking, detection ranking, and the product of these three, which is the design RPN ranking. In order to update this value, I will need to click the green traffic light to perform the analysis. 
This will calculate the RPN ranking for each failure mode. Finally, another style of FMEA that we might want to perform would be a failure mode effects and diagnostic analysis, or FMEDA. There's two common formats for this, either IEC 61508 or the ISO 26262. For this one, I'll choose the ISO 26262 to view its options. Again, from the grid view, I can choose the ISO 26262 FMEDA to change the grid view to show options and selections relevant for that method. To input FMEDA data, I can edit a failure mode. For a general IEC 61508, I would select the Detectability tab and enter the detection parameters, such as the percentage of dangerous faults of that failure mode and the dangerous and safe diagnostic coverage percentages. For an ISO 26262 failure mode, I would tell the program whether or not the fault is safety related, the safe failure fraction, the potential to violate the safety goal, and if a safety mechanism is in place. Different safety mechanisms can be predefined or created directly from this dialog. In this example, I can select an existing overheat protection safety mechanism that I've already created. Safety mechanisms can be reused for different failure modes and thus reports showing the effectiveness or the percentage of overall system faults accounted for by each safety mechanism can be produced. In this case, the safety mechanism will be predefined with a single point fault diagnostic coverage percentage and for multi-point faults, the detected and perceived percentages. After entering the diagnostic information, Reliability Workbench can then calculate the expected FMEDA values we would need to see, such as single point fault rate, residual fault rate, and latent multipoint fault rate, among others. If I click the Perform Analysis button on the toolbar, Reliability Workbench will calculate those results for each failure mode. I can also view system-wide results by clicking on the Results Summary icon on the toolbar. System-wide results will show me general results for both the FAMICA and FMEA. I can see general IEC 61508 diagnostic results, as well as ISO 26262 diagnostic results for the whole system as well, including results such as single-point fault metric, latent fault metric, and PMHF. All of the failure mode information and system results can be displayed in customizable reports. I can access the report viewer from the right window view mode option. Reliability Workbench comes with many built-in and customizable reports to show information for each different module. Some common reports that I might want to use would be the design process FMEA report for process and design FMEAs that show the risk priority number of each failure mode. For MIL standard 1629 reports, I may wish to look at the criticality analysis report, which tells me each failure mode and its mode criticality. For FMEDAs, I might use the ISO 26262 report, which gives me a list of the failure modes and their FMEDA information, as well as system-wide information, such as single point fault metric and latent fault metric. If you would like more information about the Reliability Workbench, or to download an evaluation copy, please contact Isograph. You can reach our technical support at support at isograph.com, and our sales sales at isograph.com, or by calling the numbers on the screen. Thanks, and have a great day.